All right, we got a video on the El Dorado stacked stone. This is the older wood blend. Uh, a lot of different shades. They did a really good job with the stone. You know, for the look and everything like that. On the uh, patio, that's our flagstone patio, Pennsylvania blue. Uh, today we're doing the video on the El Dorado stack stone, the veneer here. But if you're interested in the flagstone, I have another video on that. So uh, we're going to go over a few things. On I'll go over the basics of how to get this up. And I'm not going to spend too much time on all the tips and tricks until the end of the video. So if you want the basics, <clears throat> it'll be the first few minutes. If you want to really get into it, watch all the way through. And uh, I'll have some tips and tricks for you in the end. That's the plastered front and a little porch pocket we're doing. We're using El Dorado stacked stone. This is super easy. All comes in panels, right? It's all dry stacked, gives a great look. This is, this is the Alderwood blend. Four inch angle grinder. You want your margin trowel. Showing you what the mix is here that I like to use. We got Portland cement type one and two. That's no lime. I like to fill the bucket up a heavy half with just powder from the bag. Throw a trowel of sand in there. Go ahead, buddy. And then we're gonna throw this bonding agent in there. I like OctaWeld, right? This stuff will really get it sticking. Now, if you're not doing your stone on plaster, you know, if you have like an already finished, uh, say, basement wall, you know, like your foundation wall outside and it's smooth, you might want to get a laticrete instead of using this mix or an exterior thin set would work good. So, all right, go ahead, hit that up. Let's put about two of them in there. Just get whatever your device is. I like to go heavy on this and two two of that is that come on just dump it bro yeah right, hey, we ain't got all day <laughs> get to see what an asshole i am again hey. on camera <laughs> so we throw two of them in there we'll add some water and we'll drill mix it up into a paste all right go ahead. so yeah just dump a bunch of water in there and look if you make it too wet all you gotta do is throw some uh, powder in it, but this this gonna take up a lot of water. But if it ends up being too wet in the end, uh, you just throw a couple scoops of powder in, keep mixing it. You want it to be like a paste, a nice wet paste. All right, this type of stone, it's all about getting your bottom course straight. After that, all you're doing is stacking them up, right? So you want to start at your low side, okay? So this is my low side. I got that whole run right there. Now this is going to cost me more cuts at the bottom because I'm going to have to cut the bottoms off that whole long run there. But it's going to end up looking a lot nicer. So what I did was you just take a stone. They're all, I think they're about five and a half. But there's a, a couple different makers that make this type of application okay so whatever you know whatever the stone is you can see my little mark i made there okay that's the lowest side of this wall always start at the lowest side and i put my level on it and you see my level mark see my level mark okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to carry that level mark you know all the way down the whole long run of the wall and everything so my first layer is going to be perfectly level what i do is after i make those marks i'm going to nail a board up in here okay so that i can rest the stone right on it and then just start going up at the end i remove the board 
and I feel in the bottom. So I'm gonna get to putting the board on and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, this is our starting point, right? I got level boards laid up right across the bottom. What we're gonna do is just stack right on those boards and uh, we'll do like the whole front. And at some point I'll pop those boards out and then just cut the stones to fit underneath them. Just gotta shorten them up a little bit. Um, so when we start laying, run run some more footage pardon me you want your margin trowel okay margin trowel stone okay what are you gonna do get a little bit on there right scratch it into the stone a little bit with the corner of the trowel you don't need a whole ton you know now you got your back on there you want to make sure that there's nothing over the edges that's going to get stuck in between like say boom like you got a piece like that on there that's going to hold it off from laying onto your next stone nice and flat okay put like a slim finger away and a slim finger higher than your previous stone put it on there and close it in. Drop it down and close it in. After you laid a few stones, you want to take the corner of that trowel. If there's any excess, take it off because it's going to hold your next stone from sitting low. So that's pretty much it. Make sure your stone is free from any overhang. Butter up the back. Stick it on there. And make sure nothing's gonna, you know, there's no slop over top of it or anything like that. And you just keep going. You'll run a line and then cut your last piece. Now, your last piece on the line, right? I, I, I like to go backwards on it. I like, to, I like to lay it backwards so I can get a nice clean line here, right? It could be a little shorter. You mark it, but you know, if you're not confident, right? Cut it a hair longer. You can always buzz a bleed off of it, right? Gonna go right in on it. Boom. I like to force it a little bit. You know, I cut them tight. You really don't have to cut them tight. Uh, if it's like an eighth of an inch short, right? All you got to do. If it's like an eighth of an inch short, right? Just put a little slap of glue in there. And you'll be good. Mine's not short, so I don't need it. Get it in there. Oh, meets perfect. Everything meets perfect at the top there. So now we got our first level on this wall. We're going to do that around everything, and they're perfectly level. We got the first course up there. Boom. We're just going to go up.
your favorite stonemasons back. And I want to talk to you about staggering joints. It's about the only rule <laughs> that applies in the pattern to this stone. And honestly, there's some latitude in it because you, you still can't even really see it. But if you look, this is where my joint is. This is where this stone ends and this stone begins. I'm laying linear like a typewriter, okay? So I don't want this joint running all the way up here. I don't want that stacked like that, okay? I want to break that joint in a healthy way. And when I say in a healthy way, I mean, I don't want it right there. I don't want it right there. I don't want it right there. I don't even want, I really don't even want it that close. I'll accept that in certain situations, but I really like it to be nice and broken. So you see, I'm up four inches here or something like that. Okay, and what I'll do, I mean, I've been doing this for a while, so mostly, I know which stone I'm putting in there before I even grab it, you know, maybe the next few. But for you, I'll say you just go, I mean, look, I just showed Eric what to do and he's pounding them out now, okay? He made a perfect cut in the middle too, I think, right? So just So now I ended here. I got all the way over to here. I'm planning right now, okay? Because I want a shorty in there. You got three sizes to these. You got short, medium, and long, you know? So you gotta pick one of the three. I'm gonna pick this shorty, because if I pick this shorty, I can put anything after it. I got a nice four inch break right there. I can put anything after it. I dry stacked the stones on the top of this window to see where they're going to land with the soffit. And it's literally like a quarter inch shy of two perfect stones. So instead of cutting a corner slot and then having to cut a short piece on the top of this whole window, I have opted to go to this level. So this is actually the stone right here, right? This is an entire stone right here and this is a half rip, right? So that gets me level with the window. Now I can just run straight across, you know, a lot easier. And I'll worry about shaving that top piece when I get up there. It's no problem. Just do it with the grinder. This makes life a lot easier. Sometimes you got to make a distinction between doing a corner notch or just making a level. This is an inside corner. So if you look here, this stone goes all the way back to the wall. This stone meets it. Okay. Now I want to go opposite. So this stone right here is going to go all the way back to the wall and then I'm going to put a nice little piece in there now this is super tough because it's a tiny little niche right but a couple pointers on this right let me see that stone right there this one it's a little smoother it's not so in and out like you see this one's in and out right here you know it's not so in and out. If you look at it, it's pretty, pretty flat, you know. It's, it's as flat as it's going to get in this, in this pile of stone. And that makes it a little easier to work with when you're putting your first stone in. All right. So, we got the stone in there. Going to grab a different piece here. Because I glue it. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that on there. And I'm going to measure it. i got to measure it at the deepest part. Because then I'll just scribe this lump out right here so we can get a nice tight fit. So I'm going to go right there. Alright, I'll give it a try on the fit. And it looks like it's good. And i got to scribe that lump out. So I'm going to just take my grinder. I know my lump is about right there. I'm 
I might have to keep going with it. There we go. All right, so you can see, let me just make sure, see that? See, I, I scribed that little roll right into it. And it'll fit tighter, and I mean, at the end of the job, it'll be really clean work. You know, I mean, if you don't care so much, I don't know, maybe you just plug them in there as they fit and fill the voids with cement or something like that. I don't do that, though. I like it looking really good in this. I don't mind taking the time for it. Now, so, boom, we got that stone going into the wall with the piece right here. I'm going to flip-flop it. Let's see what I got in here. All right. See, that's a dead perfect fit right there, man. You know? So, I'm just going to treat it a little bit. So this stone right here, not, not so flat, all right? But that's okay. I mean, I do this all the time. So for you, I tell you, maybe you want to think about getting something that's really flat. All right, so that's the inside corner. Now, the outside corner, tough for me to show you because there's no outside corner on this particular application. But when you order this stone, you're ordering corner pieces with it and the corner pieces look about like that they come like a nice little L right and that's all you got to do the short side then you flip the next corner for the long side so the long side breaks the joint all right corner notching I'm just gonna line it up here I'm gonna make my mark right I'm going to line it up here. I'm going to make my mark. I got my two marks. I'm going to just bring them together. I'll use my pinky. Oh, let me see if I can see that. I'll use my pinky as a guide on this long one. And I'll just get it right in there. Right? Then... As a tip, I'm going to tell you, if it's uh, any bit moderately warm outside, uh, you drill mix this, right? You let it sit for 10 minutes. It's going to tighten back up. Then you're going to want to hit it with the drill again. You'll probably just have to hit it with the drill. Uh, sometimes just a little baby splash of water in there, it brings it back to life. So it usually tightens up that first time, and then you got it going for a while after that. Uh, and then if it tightens up, you know, you just take it back over to the drill, throw, splash a little water in it, whip, re-whip it again, you know what I mean? Because this stuff goes a long way. If the back of the thin veneer stone that you're using is uh, pretty smooth, then you're going to definitely want to go heavy on that bonding agent. If it's real rough, you could stick it up with almost anything. But, you know, it's like anything else. Like if you have two smooth surfaces, you better get that bonding agent in there. If you have one smooth surface, you better get that bonding agent in there. Sometimes you'll see, see, I hope you can see that real good. Let me see. A little extra hanging off right there. You know, just a little, you know, a lot of times you just go like that if you see it on there, because what it'll do is hold you off from laying it flat. Okay, next thing. That's it right there, see it? 
I was waiting to show you a good one. All right. Everybody's wondering, Steve, what do we do with our light though? We get the light black. I wonder if that sounded cool. <laughs> You get a light block from your masonry yard, they should have it. It should, you know, roughly resemble some shade in your, uh, in your stone. When you cut the stone, that's what it looks like. So you don't want that showing anywhere. And these are a little bit heavier. And you definitely want to make sure you get the glue around it real good hit all those edges fill it out good because this this boy right here is heavy and you also might have to hold it for a little bit you might, might have to hold it up there for a little bit Get it around your wires. Try not to get shot. All right. Massage it on there. Torpedo levels a little bit better for this one, but you know, and they're not perfectly square, so don't uh, kill yourself over it. Check one side. It's not square though, I can see that already. Alright, we're going to plumb it. Tap it a couple times. Now, it's, it's hooked on there, but what I'll do is I'll wait for it to set up a little bit. And the stone will be stuck there a little bit better. Then I can adjust it a little bit more if I have to. So I'm going to check on that in about five minutes and then go from there but they're made for the same circle for your mounting base for your light and uh you park your light right in there when you're done screw it right through the wall you're in good shape <laughs>